Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Morning Worship with God's House of Worship here located at 3818 Dorchester Road in North Charleston, South Carolina. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So come on with me wherever you are in your home. house of worship our morning worship we're located here at 3818 dorchester road in north charleston south carolina where the apostle alfonso c riley is our pastor and founder and overseer amen 
Amen and amen. Come on, let's go into our morning scripture for today. Our morning scripture will be taken from Psalms 121. Yes. Psalm 121. 121. And the word of God reads this way. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Come on, if you believe the word of the Lord, clap your hands and say amen. amen. To God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. Let us pray. Gracious God, our King, our Lord, our Redeemer. We come at this hour of the day, God, first to say thank you. We thank you, God, for just being God. We thank you, dear God, that there's nobody like you. We thank there, God, that you, God, allowed us to be uh, your children and you to be our God. So we just want to say thank you. We just want to bless you because you're so good. You're great and you're greatly to be praised. And God, because of that, we just want to praise your name in this place today. We open our hearts up to you, God. Hallelujah. That you, God, may have your way in us. We pray now, God, that you would break through that barrier that separates heaven from earth and come down and sit with us. God, send your glory. When your glory comes, God, deliverance takes place. Healing takes place, God. Someone is saved, God. Salvation shows up, God. When your glory shows up, God, you show up, God. And so we thank Hallelujah. I command my hands to 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together as we worship Him.
there a praise in the house today? Hallelujah. Is there a praise in the house today? Hallelujah. Is there a praise in the house today?
house of worship on this morning. Thankful and give honor to uh, Apostle Riley and Pastor Riley for the invitation. People don't have to open their pulpit to you. People don't have to open their doors to you. And I'm thankful that they have seen uh, something in me to continue to invite me back. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful for that and for their uh, leadership in our community and to young preachers like me. I'm thankful for their loving spirit to you, my brothers and my sisters who are here. And for those of you who will be watching on social media, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I give honor to my wife, Lady Rhonda King, who is not with me on today. She's preparing. She has a kid event on today, so I give honor to her. But she is watching. I sent her the link. Amen. So she's cooking and watching. So, baby, Amen. God bless you. I appreciate you. And to all my family. I have a few of my uh, faithful, committed friends who are here. Amen. Amen. Mr. Green, Sister King. And I'm thankful for, to you. I think I'm going to make a couple of phone calls this week. Amen. Make a couple of phone calls. You call me pastor, but I don't see you. Amen. And so that's part of the pastoral job, the rod and the staff. Amen. And so let me make a couple of phone calls, but I am thankful for them. When Jesus died on the cross, some of those guys, you didn't see them, but they were faithful. Mary and Martha was there. Amen. Yes. Amen. And in this moment, in this movement of women's empowerment that's going on, I thank God for each and every one of the powerful women that are here on today. Amen. If you would follow me to Psalm 9, Psalm 9 and verse 10, Psalm 9 and verse 10, a teaching moment would have us to know that Psalm does not have 150 divisions, Amen. and sometimes we get up here and folk try to be proper. Uh, but that's the Psalms has five books. Come on, teach and each one is a song. Amen. Uh, that's just the teaching of me of God. Each one is a song. You're right. And so it is right. Psalm 9 uh -huh. and verse 10. I will be reading from the Amplified Version. It reads this way And those who know your name who have experienced your precious mercy will put their confident trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, have not abandoned those who seek you. I read that last part again. For you, O oh Lord, have not abandoned those who seek you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take a few moments and minister on the subject today. Trust the process. Right. Look at somebody and say, trust the process. Trust the process. Processing is defined as preparing or putting something through a prescribed procedure to produce an expected end. Mm -hmm. To perform a series of operations on something in order to change or preserve it. The Latin root of processing is the word processus, which is translated a going forward or an advance. Having armed ourselves with this information, we can deduce that the process is actually working for our good. No, uh, while I'm going through it, it doesn't feel good, but it's working for my good. Yes. No, while I'm going through it, it doesn't sound good, but they're saying to me, but it's working for my good. Yes, I have some low moments where I'm frustrated and angry and agitated, but, but it's still working for my good. Yes, I have some valley experiences, but, but it's still working for my good. Yes, there are times when we cry out to God, where are you? Is there anybody in the house today, anybody watching online that has been in a place where you cried out to God, where are you? Especially. 
especially when you see him working and moving in somebody else's life and you are faithful to God, you have a prayer life, you are saved, you are doing the best you can, but it seems like something won't open for you and we cry out Lord where are you is there anybody who has been in a place where you have cried out Lord where are you I've been dealing with this thing for a long time I've been down here in this valley for a long time I've had this family situation for a long time I've been dealing with this thing in my body for a long time Lord where are you uh, we uh, get frustrated and irritated waiting on God. But something deep on the inside of me. Any you ever been to a place where you, you know, you say, I'm about done with this thing. I'm about done with this church thing. I'm about done with this God thing. But but something deep on the inside of you will not let you let go of the Almighty God. Yes. My yes. faith in God won't let me turn turn around. My, my faith in God and the testimonies that I've already had won't let me give up and throw in the towel. He has a track record in my life and even though I'm feeling uh, some type of way, hallelujah, you ain't want to tell nobody but the truth of the matter is sometimes we feel some type of way and we want to say, man, I'm later for this. But something on the inside Maybe it's something that grandmama put there when you was little. Something on the inside. Maybe it's the moment where God picked you up and turned you around and changed your life. Something on the inside. Maybe it's the moment where you remember he picked you up out of the muck and the mire and he cleansed you and washed you. There is something on the inside. It won't let me give up. Even in the midst of difficult circumstances, yes. uh -huh. I believe that it'll work out for my good. Yes. Romans 8, 28 declares, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. The scripture gives me assurance that as long as I'm in his will, and operating in my calling to fulfill his purpose in the earth, it doesn't matter what I find myself going through. It doesn't matter where I find myself. Amen. I, at the end of this thing, when the situation is settled, it's going to be all good. Tell somebody it's all good. You want to walk out my life? But you know what? It's all good. You want to lie on me and scandalize my name? You know what? It's all good. You don't want to approve me for the money? Now you know what? It's all good. All the support I gave you when you needed me and now when it's my turn and I need your support, nobody can't find you. Uh, the phone stop. Uh, the, you won't answer the phone and stop ringing on the first ring because you swipe to the left and still all uh, to 
see me through. And in the midst of the process, it is important for you and I to understand that he will see us through. The aforementioned definition of processing informs us that there are a series of events being performed in my life to change me or save me. Tell your neighbor, God's trying to do something in your life. The issue is we like to settle with the familiar and resist change. Am I right about it, Apostle? We, we like to stay right where we at. We don't want to change. We don't want to grow. We don't want to let God be the potter and us be the clay. And you need to understand that God needs to mold you and make you and shape you. And he needs to change some things in you. And the reason why it hurts is because we are fighting against what he wants to do in our lives. And I have come to find out that some of our problems are self-inflicted because of our unwillingness to surrender. It's getting quiet through here. How many times do we have to go through the same things? How many times do we have to repeat the same processes and test the color purple already told us maybe God is trying to tell you something when when when, when we are going to when are we going to get the hint and stop fighting what God is trying to do in our life I'm here to tell you this morning that fighting against God is a losing battle and God is speaking to some of your spirits he's speaking to some of your hearts giving you instruction on some things you need to let go and some things you need to change y'all ain't talking to me God is speaking how many dreams you got to get how many times he have to wake you up at 2 3 o'clock in the morning because he's speaking to your spirit how much money you going to lose until you decide to start following God how much of your family going to have to fall off how much you got to go through when you make a decision to I allow him to change me, uh -huh. it will save me. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, if I let him do a work on the inside of me, it will save me from some things. Uh -huh. I'm here to tell you that the work of God in your life can save you. The power of God can save you from the streets. Any any form of street people in here, amen. I, I've been to every nightclub in Charleston, hallelujah. And then the Lord came and touched my life, hallelujah. Anybody remember who you used to be, amen. Don't look at me too hard now. Don't, don't look too far into my life. But, but the truth of the matter is what you see today is what is not what I always used to be, hallelujah. I'm thankful that God saved me from the streets and, and saved me from the world and, and saved me from myself. And the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. And the things I used to say, I don't say anymore. And hallelujah, glory to God, the things, hallelujah. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore, hallelujah. You ain't going to see me on nobody dance floor now unless I'm at a wedding. Hallelujah. The places I used to go. You ain't going to see my car at the liquor store. The places I used to go. You ain't going to see me buying dope from the dope man. The places I used to go. I don't go. Oh, hallelujah. Anymore. Yes, Lord. He wants to save us from ourselves. We got to let him do a work on the inside of us. It, he wants to save me from me. He wants to save me from the streets. He wants to save me from generational curses. He He can save us from ungodly passions. He, he can save us from that group we're hanging with that's steering us in the wrong direction. He can save us from fighting the urge to do what I used to do and to be what I used to be and can I tell you this morning uh, we are so prophetic that we have gotten away from the gospel apostle we, we so itching for a word for somebody to tell us but a house in a car that we have forgotten about the saving gospel of Jesus Christ what does it profit a man 
to gain the whole world and lose his soul. And some of us are so inundated with worldly desires that we have put God on the back burner. Hallelujah. Some of us are so busy chasing the bag that we have put God on the back burner. Some of us are so busy chasing after a man or a woman that we have put God on the back burner. What really works me is we cry out for God to bless us and open doors. And as soon as he blesses us, we forget about the God who blessed. As soon as you get it, amen, you forget about the God who blessed you. You pleaded with God to give you that car. You went to the lot, walk around the car 12 times, said amen, hallelujah. You said your prayer and somehow by the grace of God, you know your credit wasn't where it needed to be, but somehow, amen, the Holy Ghost got in the computer and you got finance. You prayed to God to bless you, amen. Now, you can't put gas in the car to come to the house of the Lord, hallelujah. Now, nobody can ride with you, amen. You beg God for a car. You was catching rides and on the bus and on the I got to give him praise. I got to give him glory for what he has done in our lives. Uh, you prayed and you pleaded with God to give you that house. Amen. Oh, Lord, I want a place for myself. Lord, I want a place for me and my children to lay our head. Everybody else on Facebook closing. Lord, I need you to give me a house. Amen. And as soon as you get the key to the door, amen. You spend Sunday mornings in your house, but you won't come visit God's house. Hallelujah. Uh, you spend Sunday morning in your bed, amen, but you won't come and give God praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, you go to Walmart and you go to work. Why can't you come back to the church? I don't want to hear nothing about no COVID-19 because you ain't saying nothing about COVID-19 when you in the mall things you can do to a person especially a woman is to get whatever it is you wanted from her and then go about your business no phone call no text see in the street you act like you ain't know me and nowadays we call it ghosting amen uh, we call it ghosting you just, don't, you just fall off the face of the earth and could it be that now that some of us have gotten what we have wanted from God, that we have ghosted him? Hmm? Uh, could it be now that you got what you want, what you've been praying for? You've been to church, you was at the altar every Sunday, amen? And could it be that now that you got what you want, you are ghosting God and he can't find you. Brother and sister, life is not just about getting the bag. Life is not just about chasing earthly treasures. You got a soul. What about your soul? Where, where will you spend eternity? And I need you to understand that he wants to save you. He don't just want you to be a church goer. He don't just want your ties. He wants your time, your talent, your presence, your soul, your spirit. He wants all from you. Lord, yes, Lord. Yes. As we consider the process of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly, as we consider the process that the caterpillar goes through to become a butterfly, we understand that there is an appointed time that the caterpillar will spin itself into a cocoon, preparing for the transformation process. Lord, where you're going with this? In the cocoon, there is stagnation. And the truth of the matter is some of us are in a cocoon stage in our lives. 
Then the cocoon, there is stagnation, meaning that there is limited movement. And some of us are in a place where we aren't seeing progress or forward movement in our lives. Huh? Glory to God. Some of us are in a place, my God, where we feel stuck. You ain't got to raise your hand if you're sure. But the truth of the matter is some of us feel like we stuck. Amen. I'm stuck in this place. I'm stuck in this job. I'm stuck with this person. Amen. And we feel like we can't move. Hallelujah. We feel like handcuffs are on us. And no matter how much we pray, ain't nothing open up. I need to understand that you are in the process. Hallelujah. The, the caterpillar can't move on the inside of the cocoon. He has to stay right there until the work is completed in the cocoon. Amen. In the cocoon, there is stagnation and there is also isolation. And some of us are in a lonely place. Hallelujah. People have exited out of your life. And some of the exes from your life, amen, have hurt us. Hallelujah. That was my best friend. I'm mad at how they did me. Amen. I thought him and I, I thought she and I were going to be together for the rest of our life. I'm mad that they left me. But the truth be told, even though it was painful, some of the exes out your life are God ordained. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that God needed to shift some people out your life so that they will not hinder you from going where he wants you to go. Hallelujah. Pastors, I need you to understand that sometimes God will cause people to leave our church that was going to do nothing but cause hell in the first place. Hallelujah. I need you to understand that some exits are God ordained in your life. In the cocoon, there is stagnation. And there is isolation. But also in the cocoon, there is preparation. The whole purpose of the cocoon is to be a conduit that will assist in the shift from one phase to the next. Tell somebody, I may be stagnated. I may be isolated, but I'm getting ready to shift. Come on, Denzel. I may be stagnated. I may be isolated, but I'm getting ready to shift. Anybody feel the shift in your spirit? Anybody feel like at any moment, any time, that something is about to happen in your life? Anybody got in your spirit that God is about to turn some things around? That God is about to do some things for me? Anybody got in their spirit that this thing is about to break open? Anybody got in their spirit that your healing is coming? Anybody got in your spirit that your deliverance is coming? I'm shifting from joy to pain. I'm shifting from sadness to happiness. I'm shifting from frustration to jubilation. I'm shifting from depression to positive protection. I'm shifting from brokenness to wholeness. I'm shifting from leading to healing. I'm shifting from existing to living. I'm shifting from barren to giving. I'm shifting from being the last to being the first. It hurts, but I'm shifting. I don't understand, but I'm shifting. They left me, but I'm shifting. They look down on me, but I'm shifting. They talk about me, but I'm shifting. They believe in me, but I'm shifting. They let weed, they let weed.
soul. If you remember the definition of process, I told you that the Latin root of processing is processus, which means a going forward or advance. It is imperative for you and I to understand that he is processing us so we can move forward or advance to the next level. Can I tell you that we can't get ours like other people get theirs. We got to wait on God. We can't cheat the system. We can't backbite and, and try to, and try to uh, move other people out of the way. We got to trust the process. I would have you to understand that processing is not a bad thing. It, he's trying to change us and save us. And he's trying to move us forward and advance us to our next. I believe that there is a next coming for you. That there is a next coming for me. That it won't always be like this. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that. Concerning you and me sooner yes. or later, it'll turn in my favor. If you believe that, just stand up and turn around by faith. Sooner or later, yes. it'll turn in my favor. Late in the midnight hour, yes. God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Yes. He's turning something. for me. Kind Father in Jesus we thank you for this moment of ministry and edification and encouragement with you God. Forgive us God of our times of wavering faith. You've done it plenty of times in our lives but this moment seems to, 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 to look out. It seems to stick out so much that we have forgotten all the wonderful things you've already done for us. We understand that the same God who blessed us back then is the same God who can bless us now. Encourage our hearts now, kind Father. Speak to our heart and speak to our spirit, God. Help us to go back to what you told us and what you showed us, God. Help us to grab forth to the vision again, Father. For it will not tarry. Surely it shall come to pass in the appointed time. Father, we surrender to you, God. We've been trying to do things our way, God. We've been trying to finagle it and manipulate it and fix it the way we want it to be done, God. But Lord, we surrender. We, we take our hands off it so you can put your hands on it, God. And you move in a mighty way in our lives. We surrender. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, God. Encourage the hearts of your people. And Father, we give it all to you. We have decided to trust the process. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, clap your hands like you got the victory. Like you got the victory over what you've been going through.
for those who don't know Christ for the part of your sin as Lord of your life and make an appeal unto you today that today you would make a choice to make Jesus your choice the word has made it so simple and saying that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised from the dead thou shalt be saved for they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved if you have not received Christ I invite you to accept it this time I don't know about you but I wouldn't let another second go by without making Jesus my choice he's your covering he's your blessing He's already paid the price for us. He died that we might have life and have that life more abundantly. But if you believe in heaven and hell, if you believe in the salvation of the Lord, and you don't want your life living to be in vain, I encourage you now, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. It's simple. Receive him now. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. It's just that simple. If you receive this time, you've been saved. If you confess to you've been saved. And we invite you to connect with a word-based church. Either this church or another church. Word-based church. Amen. Not so much opinions. Not so much a whole lot of interpretation of the flesh but a word-based church. Amen? Because I'm a firm believer you can't hinge it on scripture, flush it down the toilet. Amen? Amen. We thank God so much for Pastor Jason that God will just continue to bless him for truly that is an anointed young man of God. Every time he comes this way, he leaves us excited about what God is doing in the kingdom. And he makes his words so plain amen, that even a child can understand it. Wait on the process. Trust the process. And God will, he can make a way. Amen. God bless him and his family. We thank God for you all who came with them. We thank God that God continue to bless you and keep you all. And we want to remind everyone today about the revival that's going to be held on October 21st and 22nd with Bishop Brandon Jacobs. He will be here at God's House of Worship at 7 o'clock. We invite you to put the date on your calendar and come ready for an awesome time of worship. If you're not familiar with them, haven't seen them, I invite you to go on Facebook and look for New Zion Temple or look for Bishop Brandon Jacobs and see what God is doing with that young man. But he is truly on fire for the Lord. But he will be here in Charleston, South Carolina at 3818 Dorchester Road. And I invite you to come with expectation. <clears throat> Believe in God to show up in your life and do something different for you. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, you like to plant a seed, we invite you to use our cash app, which is G House 2005, G H O U S E 2005, G House at right here at this church. Please use that app itself, and we promise you that God will bless you for your giving. Amen. But the whom much is given, much is required. God will bless you out of your obedience unto Him. Because we don't give out of grudgingness or obligation, but we give because it is what God has instructed us to do. Because believe it or not, it is a true statement when it says that God loves a cheerful giver. So your tithe and your offering be hashed up here. A mail to 3818 Dutchess Road, North Charleston, South Carolina, 29405. God bless you today. God bless you today for being here with us. In Jesus' name, we pray the blessing of the Lord continue to be upon you and keep our friend, our pastor, Jason King.